give us strength to follow your commands. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from Jeremiah. O Lord, you know, remember me and visit me, and bring down retribution for me on my persecutors. In your forbearance, do not take me away. Know that on your account I suffer insult. Your words were found, and I ate them, and your words became to me a joy and a delight of my heart. For I am called by your name, O Lord, God of hosts. I did not sit in the company of merrymakers, nor did I rejoice. Under the weight of your hand I sat alone, for you had filled me with indignation. Why is my pain unceasing, my wound incurable, refusing to be healed? Truly, you are to me like a deceitful brook, like waters that fail. Therefore, thus says the Lord, if you turn back, I will, turn, I will take you back, and you shall stand before me. If you utter what is precious, and not what is worthless, you shall serve as my mouth. It is they who will turn to you, not you who will turn to them. And I will make you to this people a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail over you. For I am with you to save you and deliver you, says the Lord. I will deliver you out of the hand of the wicked and redeem you from the grasp of the ruthless. The word of the Lord. Psalm 26, read responsibly, Give judgment for me, O Lord, for I have lived with integrity. I have trusted in the Lord and have not faltered. Test me, O Lord, and try me. Examine my heart and my mind. For your steadfast love is before my eyes. I have walked faithfully with you. I have not sat with the worthless, nor do I have I have hated the company of evildoers. I will not sit down with the wicked. I will wash my hands in the soil, that I may go over the session around my own. Singing aloud a song of thanksgiving and recounting all your wonderful deeds. Lord, Lord, Lord. Second reading is from Romans. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone, do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peacefully with all. Beloved, never avenge yourself, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The word of the Lord. Please rise for the gospel acclamation. Saying, God forbid it, Lord. 
This must never happen to you. But Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. For you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If anyone wants to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world, but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly, I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. Dear siblings in Christ, grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our hopes and our dreams keep us motivated. Our hopes and dreams keep us moving forward in life, keep us working toward a goal, working for a better future, working toward achieving something great. Our hopes and dreams help us to get excited when we wake up in the morning for a new day. Those same hopes and dreams show up in all sorts of ways, relationships, professions, life, school, sports, and you name it, so much more. When a sports team sets goals for their seasons, they often start small and create bigger and bigger goals, building blocks for the rest of their season as they go along. No matter if these teams or athletes are local, national, or international, setting goals gives athletes teams and coaches and even fans, something to work on and work toward every day. When you start practices, especially here as we're thinking about the fall practices, perhaps the goal every day is to work on and get better at all of the various techniques that are needed in your sport, to work on and get better at the fundamentals to achieve certain conditioning and workout goals that will help you achieve things later on in the season. Be accountable to teammates. Watch film together if needed. Get, as my coaches would say when I was in high school, get 1% better every day, every practice, every repetition. Win those rivalry games. Have a winning record. Win the conference. Win state. Make the playoffs. Of course, it is inevitable but some of these goals may not be achieved. Only one team in a conference wins the championship. Only one team wins the state championship, the World Series, the Super Bowl, the World Cup. Only one team gets to raise those trophies. However, despite not achieving certain goals, a successful season isn't always defined by the trophies you do or do not raise. Rather, a successful season often is defined as gaining a better understanding of yourself, of your sport, of your teammates, your skills, your coaches, what might be required of you for the next season, and simply gaining that next level of understanding as you prepare for that next season, the next game, the next workout, the next thing that relates to your sport. No matter if you are a sports team, a church, or like today, Jesus' disciples, you have hopes and dreams about what the future holds. You also have some anxiety that goes along with those hopes and dreams. You do not always know what will come your way despite your best efforts to be prepared for all that might come. Sometimes, as new information is presented to you, Along your journey towards those very same hopes and dreams and goals, you call an audible. 
in order that she might reset those expectations. The disciples today learn that they need to call an audible regarding their expectations of who Jesus is, what Jesus has come to do, and the role the disciples will play in the church on earth once Jesus is gone. So what are those hopes and dreams? And to answer that, we back up to last week's reading, as Peter proclaimed to Jesus after being asked by Jesus, who do you say that I am? And Peter responded, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. It is on this confession, Jesus said he would build the church and that nothing, not even the gates of hell, would prevail against it. Peter nails this confession. Even Jesus gives him that gold star. <coughs> Caught up in this confession by Peter is the expectation that Jesus would overthrow the Roman oppressors, set the Jewish people free, and to go forth to rule as a mighty king. These hopes and dreams do not come out of nowhere for Peter and the disciples, as you can find them throughout Scripture. Not only were these things, expectations, or expected of the Messiah, but the disciples witnessed Jesus doing these things, doing great deeds that nobody else had ever done. Miracles beyond comprehension. Tame the unruly and unpredictable waters and wind and the sea. Walk on that same water. Heal the sick, raise the dead back to life. Feed thousands few loaves of fish. It is no wonder their longed for future and hope and dreams were believed to be standing right in front of them in the person of Jesus. Problem is, Peter and his disciples misunderstand not only Jesus, but his ultimate purpose. Jesus tells the disciples that he, Messiah would be arrested and killed by the very powers the disciples were hoping he would overthrow. So Peter scolds Jesus for making this very prediction that he would die and be persecuted. But Jesus puts Peter back into his place and says to him, get behind me, Satan, which is probably one of the strongest rebukes we see in all of Scripture. Jesus knows his purpose. Peter and the disciples misunderstand it. Peter falls, in this instance, into the role of the tempter, the one in who, when Jesus is in the wilderness, offers Jesus power beyond measure over all the kingdoms of the earth. In that moment, Jesus rejects that power, that temptation the tempter offers him. He does so again here with Peter. Jesus now lays out the expectation of what is to come and what it means to follow him. And says, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. Those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. This is probably the most terrifying call story in all of Scripture, because Jesus sets out the example of follow me, and you will die. He lays it all on the line in this moment. This is terrifying. This is scary. This is a scary call to try to live up to by Jesus. Thankfully, he helps along the way, along our journey. And there's often a few ways that we can misinterpret this. Debbie Thomas describes these two of these ways in which we could respond to this call, both of which aren't helpful. So please ignore this. This is not me advocating for this. One, we could minimize what Jesus asks of us. Deny ourselves certain pleasures 
ignore the social media for a few days or a month. Deny some other pleasures for a little bit in our life. Try to pray more, study scripture some more, volunteer, and avoid the parts of Jesus' call that make us uncomfortable. <laughs> the other part, the other way to respond is to maximize it. Maximize what Jesus is asking us, what Jesus is calling us to do. To become, quote, so heavenly minded that we are of no earthly good. To deny ourselves that which gives us life, gives us joy, gives us pleasure, delight, and celebration, and to lecture others, and even berate them to do the same. All in an effort to sacrifice more than we should in order to gain, gain some heavenly reward that does not exist, while failing to see those in need of love right now. As I said, both of these extremes do no earthly good. Rather than these two possibilities, to adhere to the call Jesus places in front of us, we go back to the heart of Scripture, go back to the heart of our calling. Love God, love ourselves, love others. As Debbie Thomas continued to take up the cross, as Jesus did, is to stand always in the center of the world's pain. Not just to glance in the general direction of it and then slide away, but to dwell there. To identify ourselves with those who are aching, weeping, screaming, and dying. To insist that our comfort isn't worth it unless all of God's beloved can share in it too. To receive our daily bread, not just for us, but for everyone. Taking up the cross means recognizing Christ crucified in every suffering soul and body that surrounds us and pouring our energies into alleviating their pain, doing as much earthly good as we can. Jesus rebukes Peter so harshly this week Precisely because the temptation Peter holds out is alluring. It is deceptive. It makes us think you don't have to do the hard thing. You don't have to take this faith business so seriously. You don't have to give up all of those things that give you comfort. You don't have to die even when Jesus says the exact opposite of all of them. Things that we give into ourselves. The hopes and dreams of having faith in Jesus sometimes needs a reality check, a new focus, and all. We know that following Jesus does not mean things will always be wonderful, because they just aren't. We all know that. We all experience that. Nor does it mean that everything is going to be horrible. The truth lies, as it always does, somewhere in the middle. And that following Jesus does not mean that we must refrain from enjoying the good things in life. Fishing, and camping, and canoeing, and going out and enjoying when it's not a place and hot. The outdoors. Right? Sometimes we need the reminder that faith is not about some future heavenly reward that may or may not come, which thankfully Jesus has taken care of all of that for us. But that heavenly reward can't keep us from doing the good that we're called to do here and now. That when we are called to follow Jesus, we are called to pay attention to the people around us, known and unknown. Rather, faith is about entering into the world God loves, in order to love the people God loves, in order to remind ourselves and the world that there is life beyond death. There is love to be shared, hope to encourage us, dreams to motivate us, and the communion of saints, past, present, and future, who surrounds us as we journey through life, to care for us, to love us, to be with us, sometimes even when we're not aware of it. Continue to live out that call. Continue to live as people.
people God loves, who are called to love God's created order and God's people, God's beloved, and be loved by those whom God puts in your life. As our song that we're about to sing says, come and follow Jesus and never be the same. Thanks be to God. Amen. We join in singing our hymn of the day, number 798. Remembering 
loving and caring for the gen for God's people and all of creation. We pray for the church, the world, and the needs of all our neighbors. God of life, your words are the joy of the heart of your church. Draw the seeker to you. Place messages of hope and healing in the mouths of your witnesses, and open your children to your truth when we stumble. Merciful God. God of steadfast love, renew the earth by your spirit, that lands and oceans reveal the beauty of your creation. Challenge us to live humbly and peaceably as part of your world. Merciful God. God of new beginnings, be with students, faculty, staff, and families as they return to school this week. Inspire their mutual learning and teaching as the new school year begins. Merciful God. God of deliverance, remember all who are suffering, lonely, and in pain. Draw near to your people. Today we especially lift up Mary Lou. Dave, Dick, Vicki, Diane, Zach, Byron, Brenda, Brian, Gail, Hayden, Kathy, Jenny, and all of those we name now aloud from the silence of our hearts. Merciful God, God of justice, equip this congregation to boldly follow you in uncertain times and to remain faithful in prayer when facing challenges. Show us how best to love and care for one another and our community. Merciful God, God of glory, we give thanks for the saints who now dwell with you. Nurture us in faith until the day we join their heavenly song. Merciful God, remember us according to your steadfast love, O Lord, as we offer these in the prayers of our hearts, trusting in your compassion, made known through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Please share a sign of God's peace with one another. Please note that uh, in the book that we will not be passing the offering plates, instead they are placed in the back of the sanctuary, uh, and you are encouraged uh, to place your gifts and offerings into the plates as you uh, exit the sanctuary. I invite Allison to come up.
This is done by supporting the emotional and spiritual needs of, of people, coordinating volunteers, promoting and assisting in disaster risk reduction programs. It's a mouthful. Disaster risk reduction programs and assisting people displaced by any kind of disaster. Here in the United States, they've been on the spot in the flooding in the Northeast with the hurricanes in Southern California, the spring tornadoes that struck the Great Plains and the upper Mississippi Valley, which included parts of Minnesota and also with the fires in Maui. International disaster help includes the Ukraine war, the droughts in Ethiopia, Kenya, and Somalia, the earthquakes in Turkey and Syria, civil war and famine in South Sudan, and the refugee crisis in the Middle East and Europe. If you wish more information on uh, this organization, just, just Google search for Lutheran Disaster Response, and if you wish to give an extra donation, you can either just do a general one, or you can also um, donate um, your money to a specific crisis that might, you might be passionate about. He sang in verses 1 and 5 of hymn number 878.
nor is it grace for the prince. This is the Lord's table. And at the Lord's table, everyone, regardless of tradition or background, is welcome to come forward to receive Christ's body and blood, in the bread and in the wine. Please rise. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks to grace. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Come to the table of the Lord, for all are welcome here. Amen. Please be seated.
Please rise as you're able. Receive a blessing. You have become what you have received, the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us with the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us to this gift. In faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Receive the benediction. Together in singing or sending him, God's work, our hands which is printed in the bulletin. 